Uh, they claim it works, but it doesn't really work at all. The problem is, is that um, now, of course, carbon dating. I have to do. I do have to mention this too. Carbon dating is only used um, by the scientists that use it. It's only used to date things up to fifty thousand years. Even though you know we know the Earth is not fifty thousand years old. It's only six thousand years old. It's not anything beyond that. But they claim that it is. Okay. Uh, let me let me try to put this into perspective real quick. They want to claim that the Earth is more than fifty thousand years old. The bottom line is they don't use it for anything past fifty thousand years because they can't really test it past fifty thousand years. So if you if you got something you know that gave you um, sixteen clicks per minute on your Geiger counter, okay, and you're testing it for the amount of carbon fourteen in there, technically if if a, it was a freshly killed creature that had sixteen clicks per minute, okay. If, if the creature were 5,730 years old, you would only get eight, eight clicks per minute on your Geiger counter. Okay? If it were uh, you know, 11,000 years old, over that, then you'd only be getting four clicks on your Geiger counter. That's how the half-life works. Well, if you, um, the problem is, if there, let's say in the past, let's say a few thousand years ago, that the C14 in the atmosphere was less than it is today. That would start the, the creature that died, they would start out with a much lower C14 amount in their body. And when they measure it based on the C14 that's in the atmosphere today, the creature is going to look, I mean, thousands, tens of thousands of years older than what it actually is. And that's why I've seen things like, you know, freshly killed uh, snails that have dated 2,300 years old, things like that. Because you cannot you cannot test the consistency of carbon fourteen in the atmosphere with the creatures that you're finding. The bottom line is, no matter how much it you know you want to argue that it works, the bottom line is this: if you walked into a room and you saw a candle burning on the table, okay, uh, you weren't there when it was lit. You came in, it was already lit. It's it's sitting on the table. We want to find out. We're asking the question: When was it lit? Okay, well, there's some experiments that we can do. We can, we can test, we can measure how, how tall it is. Okay, we, we test it with, with a perfect accuracy and find out that it is exactly the candle six inches tall. When was it lit? Have no idea. Okay, well, let's, let's measure the rate of burn. We measure it with Olympic stopwatch, perfect laser accuracy, whatever you want to use, and we find out that it's, it's burning one inch per hour, let's just say. Now, when was it lit? Don't know. There's really nothing you can do to find out when it was lit. Okay, it, you can do all, the, but if if you're going to do all this experimentation, you, there's a couple assumptions that you have to make. Okay, first, you have to assume uh, has the candle always burned at the same rate? Number one, and two, you have to assume how tall was the candle to begin with. You can't possibly know those things. The only way to find out when that candle was lit, you have to find the person who lit the candle. And the only find, way to find out uh, when the Earth was created is to ask the guy that did it. Okay, I'm still convinced that the atheist cannot find God for the same reason that a, th that a thief can't find a sheriff. You can't find what you're not looking for, and you definitely can't find what you're running from. Okay, But the bottom line is, is that it, just logically, upon bare presentation to the mind, Carbon dating cannot possibly work. Okay, I, like I said, I could sit here and I could pull up a whole list of, of uh, things that they've done, where they try to, you know, say that it's, uh, you know, where they'll say, you know, like a freshly killed seal. I've seen dated somewhere around 8,000 years old, things like that. There's a lot of really uh, big mishaps in it, and it, it's not an exact science by any means. I'll show you an example here. Uh, let me quote this guy for you. Um, Let's see here. This guy said in, uh, in 1970, he says, if a C-14 date supports our theories, we put it in the main text. If it does not entirely contradict them, we put it in a footnote. A footnote. And if it completely, it's completely out of date, we just drop it. Oh, okay, well now I see how this works. It, it, you see, folks, what they do, they don't actually date things by carbon dating or potassium argon dating, we're going to have a whole video on potassium argon dating too when I get to that, or any, any of the other dating methods you want. They don't actually date it by those. They date it based on the dumb geologic column that was made up by pure imagination by Charles Lyell and a couple other guys, okay? And we'll probably have to end up covering, uh, we'll cover the um, geologic column in another one too. 
But uh, here's, the, uh, here's another one that uh, says a, geo a geologist at Berkeley uh, Geochronology Center, Carl Swisher, used the most advanced techniques to date human fossils. Okay, So he's using the most advanced techniques that were, were there to date. In 1996, he said last spring he was reevaluating Homo erectus skulls found in Java in the 1930s by testing them with the sediment found with them. Erectus was thought to have vanished almost 250,000 years ago, but even though he used two different dating methods, Swisher kept making the same startling find. The bones were 53,000 years old at most, and possibly no more than 27,000 years. Um, okay, 27,000 to 57,000 years, that's a 96% error margin. I wouldn't call that an exact science, okay? So the problem is, is that the Earth, really the, what the evolutionist problem is, is that they don't realize that the Earth is not millions of years old. Okay? It's not even tens of thousands of years old, it's only 6,000 years old. If they would get that into their head, I mean, this would be a whole lot simpler. But it's impossible them, for them to think outside the box. The Earth has to be millions of years old, and they have to make their evidence fit their theory in any way they can. And carbon dating, even though they probably, I'm, I mean, I have heard they've gotten really accurate with, with carbon dating, that they can measure, measure carbon down to the atom. I mean, that's impressive. It doesn't matter how accurate your measurement is. If you lost your constant for your measuring tool, just like we discussed, it, it's useless. There's no possible way that your dating methods can work on that. So uh, that's the bottom line. We'll have to cover some other things like how tree ring dating is not an exact science either and, and that kind of thing because people have different questions here or there. If anybody has any, any legitimate questions, you want to ask a question, Chris, what do you think about this or that, just ask me. Leave it on the comments there. I'll read through them and then uh, we find any questions on there. I'll, I'll make a whole video concerning it. So. Uh, feel free to post your questions, and I guess that's all I've got for now. I just wanted to cover that one real quick. Thanks for listening, everybody. We'll see you next time.